Hi, and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. Over the last 15 years, social media has taken the world by storm, and our lives are becoming increasingly digital, with the average American spending nearly 11 hours a day looking at a screen. Our next guest knows this all too well as both the co-founder of a digital marketing agency and an influencer with nearly 1 million followers. Adam Padilla is the CEO of Brandfire, an agency specializing in brand strategy, content creation, and social media. And aside from his professional accomplishments, Adam is also an influential content creator. His Instagram account, Adam the Creator, is one of the largest original meme pages with over 1 billion total yearly impressions across social channels. You can find him giving his expert branding advice in Adweek, The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, and Fast Company. Adam, welcome to the show. It is so great to have you here. Thank you. Great to have you here. <laughs> yeah, in your office yes. here at Brandfire in Manhattan. That's right. So tell us a little bit about Brandfire. Brandfire is a creative agency. I uh, founded it in 2012. Uh, we handle uh, all kinds of accounts, all kinds from consumer packaged goods to healthcare companies, and we basically create brands and uh, do digital marketing uh, for companies. And you also do some content creation, I believe, too. Yeah, a little bit of that uh, yeah. on my sort of uh, personal. Yeah, Side. that's I'm yeah. so interested in that as well because yeah. unlike a lot of entrepreneurs, you also have a huge social media presence just as a person uh, with Adam the Creator, over seven hundred thousand followers. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's sort of my passion project yeah. and my expression of uh, sense of humor mm -hmm. and you know art and I guess if you it's a loose. It's uh, like term a, just to call it art, I guess, but it some is people art, consider though. it. I mean, you create some hilarious memes on that account. Thank you. It's one of the largest meme accounts um, in social media today. Well, well, at least in the original um, sector, in terms of original yeah. content. OC, original content, yeah. Um, which uh, you know, again, you know, when I started Instagram uh, posting, it mm -hmm. wasn't even uh, you know because it was a cool thing or I wanted to try to get a following or anything like that. It was really to post my sketches. I was doing a sketchbook. Oh. So what I try to do is express myself through the creative agency. Yeah. But I found that when I did a lot of work for clients, mm -hmm. um, to keep myself fresh, I wanted to do work for myself. Right. Because you have to have your own passions there as well. Yes. I hear you. Yes. Because it, you know, it, winds up, it winds up dulling your creative uh, you know, uh, inspiration a little bit if, right. it's only, if everything you're doing is in service. Yeah. So at sometimes, uh, you know, I had to look back. I had to say, I hadn't drawn for a long time. Mm -hmm. I used to illustrate a lot, and I picked up a notebook and started to draw a sketch every day and posted it to Instagram. Oh, was That's, it a was it? It funny wasn't a meme. comedy style or what? Not did it start really. With? Uh, it started out just as sort of um, illustration exercises, like finishing. Okay. Uh, I, I created a little game for myself. I said, I want to finish a drawing. Mm -hmm. Because I had kept a, uh, kept a lot of sketchbooks in the past. Mm -hmm. Problem with sketchbooks is you don't finish things. You kind of yes. do partials. Oh my God, I hear you. you I know. have like a sketchbook as well, and it's pretty much all just half created. Parts, parts. Yeah, because sometimes you get to the middle, and then you just come up. You're like, oh, I don't know. I don't really I'm like not gonna. That. I don't have time yeah, to finish it. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. I don't know how to resolve this hand. I'm not. Yeah. Thinking, oh, or forget it's not it. how you envisioned it in your head. You're just, and you're just thinking, you know, I'm just gonna start from the beginning and do something else. That's the key. That's yeah. the thing I wanted to to really like tackle is that <laughs> yeah. the idea of perfection and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, it never really works out that way. You know, you start no. the thing and it never really works out that way, so you give up. Yeah. So my thought was, I'm gonna do a sketch, I'm gonna finish the sketch every day. How do you continuously create these brilliant concepts and not get creators fatigue? I'm a YouTuber and it is, I put out a video every week and I am struggling to come up with ideas. <laughs> yeah, it's a struggle. It's yeah. a struggle, it's every single post is a struggle, yeah. and it's and, and when I say every, that's a broad stroke. Of mm -hmm. course, maybe, maybe one in ten, I wake up or and something, just, and I have an idea. I feel so inspired. Today. I have an idea. Like, yeah. It's not even like it doesn't hit you. Like you know, I don't consider 
it, like you know, this high art, but yeah. I just I do consider every act of creation some sort of like an experience, like a spiritual yeah. experience in some level. Yeah. Like something hits you. Yeah. So maybe one out of ten, I'll go. Oh, I have a funny idea. I'll chuckle about it and I'll do it, and it's not that painful, and it yeah. goes out. Nine out of ten times, it's like. Oh, what am I, if I do this, it's derivative. If I do, and, and I think too hard. Uh -huh. I have to pull myself away from it. Yeah. I find myself, if I'm trying to think too hard and solve the problem of mm -hmm. how to write something funny. Right. You kill it. Well, I was going to do this later in the interview, but yeah. since we're on the topic, I have some memes that you created. Okay. And I'd love for you to oh, no. walk me through your creative process yeah, yeah. with how you did this. So let's, yeah. let me, let me get the ones that I found hilarious. So this is um, okay. a bunch of fish with mascara <laughs> and they're doing their eyelashes and it says, nobody, girls putting on mascara. So where did you come up with this concept? Right. I had watched my wife put on any eyeliner or mascara product, anything in her eye. Right. And she'd make this face. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of go like that. That looks pretty good. Yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah, I see it. And I'm like, that's, you know, it's like a, it's a funny, we'd make fun of it, you know, we'd poke fun yeah. and stuff, you know, she's the best. And we're <laughs> laughing about it. And then I went to bed that night and it just, this is one of those, the one out of 10 that just came like, the epiphany I said, it's like a, yeah, it's like a, like a fish, like a grouper or something. <laughs> and I'm like, huh, I went to, and it, you know, it's like, I went to bed around 1130 or something. I went to my nightstand, took out my phone, and started looking up pictures of fish, just so I wouldn't lose it. It was, right. a, it was my version of, a, of writing down the note. Yep, 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 yep. I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many times I think I have the idea. And then Great, you I'll don't remember write it. it down. Gone. Yes. Gone. Yes, and it's interesting to me that you came up with this in bed, because I feel like my best ideas also come up when I'm like laying in bed. Yes, bed and shower. Why do you think that is? Because we're not thinking about it. We're just like zoning out, and that's when the creative moments come to you. Yes. Is when you're not trying. When you're not trying. This one um, is my favorite that you did recently. It's um, a take on NyQuil, except, except it says Year Quill Hibernate. Yeah. And it just says, shut up and take my stimulus money. And then it says, sleep through the entire year, end 2020 fast. <laughs> <laughs> this I thought was hilarious. Yeah, like end your headache fast, right? Yeah, and the, and yeah. This is the headache, the 2020 Can you actually headache. produce these items? I, I think know, they would be I a know. big seller. They would, they would sell. I think they sell those on the corner, but I don't think they're called Year Quill. <laughs> these are, uh, I think it's... Uh, it's just everybody, you know, that's the thing. It comes from frustration. Yeah. It's like, I look at something, I'm like, this is insane. Yeah, it really and you think, is. can you just fast forward it? I, should, I wish I could go to sleep and wake up and it's yeah, like, right? Hibernation. Hibernation yeah, would be a great option. Hibernate through it. I'll lose some weight. I'll get, right? All the good mm -hmm. things. Let's talk about Bramfire a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what came first, Adam the Creator or Bramfire? Bramfire came first. Adam the Creator came about two or three years after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, after the, the creation of Bramfire. And why call it brand fire? Well, it was I, actually, uh, I was trying to find a name that um, was explanatory mm -hmm. in and of itself. Yeah. So that uh, uh, any client would just get it, what we were trying to do. Yeah. I was going through different styles of name. One of them was like really kind of funky, hipstery, oh. you know, stones and sticks or something. I was coming oh, up with like yeah, some yeah, abstract, yeah. abstract There's ones. a lot of those, but I think brand fire, it's clear what you do. It's just clear. It's like yeah. not trying to be so cool. It's just what it is. <laughs> but you are so cool yeah, without yeah, trying. Right. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, you never feel that way. But uh, it's, you know, but the idea being like, you know, get out of the way, you know, it's, yeah. it's what it is, you know, and to try to build somebody's brand up. And I've always been fascinated with brands. So uh, talk to me about how, how'd you get started and how did you end up there? So what was the first steps you took when you started Brandfire to kind of get the name out? Well, you know, I was lucky to have a great mentor in Jesse Itzler, who was yes. sort of like a super connector. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a partner now in Brandfire. And then it grows from word of mouth. So it's like a, the first degree mm -hmm. circle, you know, the, yeah, the yeah, sixth yeah. degree of separation thing. And yes. the first degree is the, you know, the initial um, contact when you do work for some of these people. And then their secondary contacts know about it. And then gotcha. you start to hear, you know, you start so to create kind a of buzz. word of mouth at first. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then it continues to be. So you started it about three years before Adam the Creator. So I believe that was in 2009 you started uh, yeah. Brandfire. Yeah. Uh, you know, incorporated under the name Brandfire in mm -hmm. 2012, but okay. was operating as you, Brandfire. Yeah, yeah, like for this, sure. Started up that, that company at around that time. So how did you get the funding to do this? Was it through your partner? It was through my partner yeah. at the outset. And um, 
um, sort of modest, you know, it wasn't anything crazy. We right. weren't like, you know, uh, we didn't have a huge lease or anything. Yeah. And, and uh, there wasn't a massive overhead because it was small. Right. So it was just enough runway pretty much to cover salaries for, let's say, half a year. And, okay. and um, you know, and modest salaries at that just to keep people going. Yeah, because you have to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But you have, you have to live. You don't yeah. have to eat. But again, you're not going to get, you don't get rich. You know, you're not right. making yourself rich, you know, right, right, on the right, outset. Right, right, right. You're just creating you're, sort you're of runway. You're starting the base of success and building from there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that it grows itself. You know, yeah. you want to you want to eat off of that once it grows. And then as it started to grow, um, the finance uh, wasn't a problem. It became mm -hmm. self-sufficient. Nice. And um, and right now, uh, you know, as things are changing, even with this mm -hmm. COVID um, situation, yes. you know, things adapt. People need more nimble agencies that are more flexible. So with Brandfire, do you also help brands uh, with their social media presence? We do, yeah. It's it's really about you know creating a good content mix, mm -hmm. connecting with the audience. You yeah. know what I do with the um, you know uh, with my clients is you have to turn your brand into a personality. That's what a brand is. It's so true. I think that's a really good point you make. Is yeah. it, people don't buy for the product. Sometimes they literally buy for the brand. I mean, think about how many people just buy an Apple phone just because it's yeah. the new Apple phone, even yeah. though it's so much more expensive than the Google Pixel, which is just as good, in my opinion. I think it's a matter of, you know, we're used to um, the commoditization of mm -hmm. a lot of things, yeah. especially nowadays. Like, you know, you, uh, you know, I'll go on to Amazon, and if I'm, gonna, if I'm in the market for a glass protector for my phone, mm -hmm. I'm not brand loyal. It's like, I look for the glass protector with the best rating. Yeah. And I look and I go, okay, this, this looks pretty good. This looks, it's a good price. So I think things are commoditized that way. A lot of things are commoditized that way. You can differentiate when you do have a solid brand. You still yeah. have to have a great product that gets well reviewed and gets talked about. But the brand itself, if you could step out from the commoditization pack, mm -hmm. you could even charge a premium, but you could, you don't have to. But I think it just creates like more of a, a connection between you and the customer. Yeah. And they understand where you're coming from. And so where do you start when you have a new client and they want to establish themselves with a really solid brand? What's that conversation like? I mean, I listen. I listen to the to the leader, the thought leader. Okay. Whoever the thought leader or leaders are, they're usually one at the head that really has a vision. Yeah. And you listen to where, why they want to do what they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I always look at something like you have a, you know, the, the classic story is that you have the how you do things. Yeah. And the why you do things. Yes. The how is just like a mechanism. Right. I'm, I'm doing the, the why is the important thing. You have the why now. Right. Um, and the next step would be coming up with creative branding concepts to help them reach their prospective consumer. Yes. So what's what's the next step for you when you're working with a client? Um, do you ask them maybe what did you have in mind, or do you guys come up with a bunch of creative ideas? Yeah, so you get, you'll typically get a creative brief mm -hmm. for a project. So they might want to um, launch a new, because uh, it's, it's usually not just launching a brand into the marketplace. Gotcha. It's usually changing the brand along the way while they launch products or while okay. they launch something, right? Yeah, so it's like, sense. you kind of like pivot, you know? Yeah. Um, so let's say the new product is, uh, you know, a trail mix or something. Mm -hmm. and we're doing, and it's uh, Nature's Eats is one of, my, one of my clients who I love. And so, okay, mm -hmm. if the trail mix is coming out, the brief is you want to sell X amount of units across these, you know, platforms, and this is where you're going to sell, and this is this is what you want to do. This is how many you want to move? So they decide on the platforms. Th they decide first. On, oh, well, that's the why, and, and then and, you know the platforms, and then you. Yeah, you, you okay. know where they're going to go. You want right. to know where you know. I want to know if this product's going to be in Kroger's, like, or is it going to be just an Amazon uh, product? Because you need to be, know who the consumer is. I need to know who the consumer is and who the competition is. Ah, uh, okay. Those are the two things. That's how you triangulate. You look yeah. at what's the competition. Yeah. And when you create a brand. Yeah. Think about it like you're running, uh, you know, it's almost a political race. Yeah. Because if somebody stands for this and someone stands for this and you're going to come in as the Green Party or whatever right. party, how are you different? What can you be about? What is, the, mm. what is your lane that is both differentiating and true to you? Okay. That's the puzzle. It's like, how do you differentiate it? Yeah. But how do you make it but also be, an expression of the of be that your founder? authentic self as the brand? Got to be. How can yeah. you, how can you fake it? Cuz only you can be your best self. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. It was corny, but it's, it's so true. cliche, but it's so true. And that's what you do. You tell you, you find their best self and you find the version of that self that's going to differentiate among the big and be three most whoever marketable they are. As be well. marketable. Yeah. 
So now is is that when you start coming up with creative? Yes. Then okay. you create. Um, I like to create sort of a mood board that's about that mm. style and what you're trying to do, and you just kind of get abstract a little bit. Okay. But you take them along. Like, and that's along the, the journey. This is, now we've entered the creative process fully. It's we've yeah. past research, and this is where things can can get sometimes really challenging. Yeah. And we were talking about creator's fatigue, and I feel like that's sometimes where this kind of comes into play. Yes. Or you just have a brilliant idea that pops into your head suddenly, and it just works so well. It's, you know, I like to bridge that logic, because you, you, you sort of detected the shift between the yeah. logic and then the art. Yep. Yeah. And art is like, you know, muse and <laughs> fancy, and, and logic is more like, well, if this, then that. If uh -huh. X is Y, then you have to be Z. And yep. I like to try to bridge the logic right into that creative process. Mm. It's not as artistic as you think. A lot of it is whether it's a font choice, whether it's a color choice, it's analytical. Because you look at it and you say, well, we can't do a font like this or like that. Okay. It's like process of elimination a lot of times. Gotcha. Uh, or, you know, well, you know, every uh, typeface or every uh, color scheme has a, has a uh, meaning. Something that's cre it's communicating. It, it means yeah, something. And yeah. if I did something in sort of like a ragtag kind of look, you'd say, okay, that's small market kind of artisan look. If I did something that looks really clean and sleek, you'd think, oh, okay, that's elevated. Yeah. Everything has a meaning to it. So yeah. it's not like art. It's more like communication. Right. So you're creating um, whatever you landed on. Let's say logically you said, well, you know, you do one of those coordinates. Well, we want to be in the luxury space, but we also want to be a reimagining of the luxury space. So a little bit of, so you create, okay, th that's what you're doing. So what typefaces would accomplish that? What mm. styles would accomplish that? And you run it against those metrics. And then when you, I like to pick no more than two or three varieties. Okay. I feel like it's irresponsible for a design company or creative yeah, company. Yeah, to give too many options. Then what do you do? If, it's if, true. If I'm that person, I don't know what to do. I, I think of it like... There's too many options. It becomes overwhelming. Too much. It's like yeah. a stylist. Like I'm like their stylist. Yeah. Imagine somebody gives you a choice of 12 different outfits. I don't know. Right, right. But say A or B, maybe yeah. C. Okay, I like that one. Right? Yes. So I, I try to do the hard work to cull it down. Okay. I might look at 12 versions myself, but then I kill it. I but the, with your expert opinion in creating your own brand, you really do know what works best. Well, yeah. yeah. You, know, you like to hope that there's that respect going into the relationship yeah. where they do kind of defer to a lot of your choices. And that's a good thing. That's always a healthy thing. Yeah. At the same time, you also want to be flexible enough, especially if the client has great taste. Mm -hmm. I know my profile of my perfect client. They do have good taste. If they admittedly don't, which is okay, because mm -hmm. that's what, if you're hiring us yeah. to create something... That's okay, as long as they're also open-minded enough to take a risk. Yeah. Then that's awesome. Then bad taste, Have good taste doesn't matter. Have you ever turned away a client? Um, recently, you know, I don't like to consider it turning away. Because it's just that's not like, a good fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's usually, you could just tell in yeah, the, in yeah, the yeah. beginning stages of the conversations where it's like, <laughs> maybe down the road at some point, maybe but no. I don't know. Yeah, because it's, it's not even just for me. It's preservation for them. I don't want to, I, I could be so annoying if you... If you, if you don't want to hear, like, You're I'm passionate about my stuff, yeah. right? So, like, I'll call like, the client and go, oh, my God, I had this great idea. Let's do this. If you're not into it, I, I could be a little much. Yeah. I could be a little much. And that's okay. It's not their fault. Right. You know, it's just not the right fit. It's not the right fit. But for me, the best client, like I said, if you're open-minded, willing to take a risk. Yeah. And willing to go. You just got to do it. You can't like, um, you know, analysis paralysis. Yes. You can't <laughs> overthink the thing for a year or well, six months. Well, I think that goes back go. to how you started Adam the Creator where you were getting, uh, you, yes. were, you weren't actually completing things. And yes. so you just said, I'm going to hold myself accountable and I'm just going to post these every day. And it goes back to your original beliefs. So yeah. it's, it's very much, they're different things, but they're so tied together. I love that you connected it because I, I that's exactly right. And it's what I keep on trying to... I call it the finishing muscle. And anybody yeah. who's worked with me knows what I'm talking about is that I consider the first 95% mm -hmm. of, of a project equal in difficulty to the last 5%. It's yeah. equal. Interesting. It's equal. It's very easy to get something 95% done but not launch it. Yeah. It's actually, no, I shouldn't say very easy, but it's, it takes this much work to do that and it takes this much work to actually close it off and say, we're done, let's ship the thing. Yeah. So my, I think there's yeah. a lot of fear in that oh, for yeah. people. You know, they don't want it to go, the, the launch to go poorly. It's, yes. You know, accepting the vulnerability that you're putting yourself in. It's fear, it's vulnerability. It's, it's knowing that you're falling short of the perfection in your mind. Yeah. 
because you're, the perfection in your mind is a fantasy. Yeah, it's true. Do you ever have moments like that? I mean, you've accomplished so much, but I think even the most accomplished people have moments where they doubt themselves and they have- All the time. It's full of doubt. It's, yeah. it's on, on either side, it's just doubt. So how do you handle that? You go, you make the commitment to, <laughs> yeah. I have to go. Yeah, It's I like, it's like I have to, that, well, that was the, the practice that I continue to practice in mm -hmm. Adam the Creator is, I have to post before I go post to sleep tonight. Every single every day. Every single still? day. Wow. I have to post before I fall asleep tonight. But this isn't perfect. But all the all the words, you know, all the voices. It's not. It's not perfect. It's not. I could be better. This isn't the greatest idea. This is, Adam, you got to post it. Well, you certainly are a very creative person. You've done a lot. You've accomplished a lot. Thank and you. I wonder, like, looking back at yourself when you first started doing this, is there anything that you would want to tell yourself? Uh, maybe some advice or something that would be good to avoid if something <laughs> happened that was a giant waste of time. You know, it was, it's so funny you say that because hearing you say that, and thank you, it's so kind to say <laughs> that, you know, I, I tend to not feel successful. I think the most successful people feel that way because we're <laughs> always looking at the next thing, the next thing. Yeah. You know? It really and you is know, true. I'm never like, ah. Like, yeah. like, I just had like a, a, a deja vu moment or something. You know, I have the... I have like a, you know, a host talking to me about my success. It's like, this is success, right? Yeah, I, I mean, congrats, this is it. you won right, the game. Right, I did, I won it, right? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And you know, the, I guess what I would tell my younger self is you're never gonna feel successful unless you feel <laughs> successful. You're never, there, there's yeah. never gonna be a moment where you're like, I did it. To, any, to my younger self, yeah. the idea is like, just create, don't look for, create and finish mm -hmm. and put it out. Finish, yeah. Finish, finish the thing. Opening up, when I say that 95-5 thing, it is so much easier mm -hmm. to open up a new project mm -hmm. when you're at 95% done or 96% done yes. and not close this one. So much easier. It doesn't seem easier and you elevate it to say- Well, because you're always thinking on to the next one, on to the next one. Finish that one. Yeah. Not only finish that one, but put it out, get feedback, and, and adjust and do another one. Yes. Don't do parallel things. Right. Do the thing and do it and put all of the energy into a simple thing mm -hmm. and finish it. Because you'll look at it and go, it's 98% done. And I'm not seeing any results from it. There's no, there's magic in the finishing. Yeah. It's not in the beginning. Well, that's such good advice. And um, you're just filled with it. I feel like this is one of the most inspiring interviews because of all of the <laughs> advice. I mean, I'm certainly going to take a look at the projects I haven't completed anytime, and anytime. finish them. So thank you for that. Yes. It's been so wonderful speaking with you, Adam. And thank you to everyone who tuned in today. And if you want to learn more about Brandfire, visit brandfire.com and follow them on Instagram at brandfire.com. Fire. Or if you would like to laugh, follow Adam on his meme account, Adam the Creator. Trust me, it is hilarious. I follow it. It's just a good laugh every day. <laughs> this is all for this episode of School of Hustle. You can keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you can stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard, please leave a review, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We will see you next time. Bye.